Okay, today I want to talk about testing the spark on a ATV, side-by-side, -side, um, lawn equipment, anything that has a threaded top on the spark plug. Um, when you look up spark plug testers, you're going to see basically this spark plug tester, which is for a normal, I would consider like a normal automotive spark plug. Um, this is going to be the majority of the testers that you'll see. Um, all there is a simple light bulb in here. You plug this boot on the spark plug, you plug this into the boot from the car, and then you crank the car over and you see if this is showing light. That lets you know that power is going to the spark plug. Now, yes, it's possible your spark plug might still be bad and you can do another test where you just remove the spark plug, put it into the boot, hold it against the top of the head of the engine where it's bare metal, crank it over and watch to see if the spark plug is actually sparking. Um, defective spark plugs happen very, very low, low in my opinion. Um, you change them because they're old and dirty, but they're usually still giving some spark. So this lets you know if your ignition system is applying the power to the spark plug. Now when you have these thread-ons, there's not much you can do. It's too loose inside the boot. And this is not going to go into the factory boot because it's made for the size of the screw-on head. Now, most of these spark plugs, when you buy them, come with this little screw-on cap that then would allow you to plug the boot from your spark plug tester on here, but you still wouldn't be able to get the boot onto this. So, it, it's kind of, you know, now, lately there's been a few spark plug testers on um, Amazon where this unscrews and gives you that threaded area but it doesn't change the boot so it's kinda like you can put the the piece you take off of here onto the spark plug then this will plug on then this will plug into the other thing but they don't give you just a simple light bulb I don't know why they don't have one like that but all the ones I've seen have some adjustment knob over here and it's open it's not a bulb inside, it's literally two pins that arc across each other and you can screw it in and out and adjust it. And I just want a simple light for quick testing. If it looks weak when I'm doing the testing, then I'll go further, but if it's fine, it's fine. Um, so what I like to do is I'm going to modify these so that I can use them for either regular spark plugs or I can use them for threaded spark plugs and it's, it's a pretty simple procedure I do to this. Um, all I do is, just like I said, these spark plugs usually come with a cap that makes it into like a normal automotive spark plug. So what I've been doing is, is for years as I've been doing tune-ups and changes, I've been saving all these caps. I also save a good amount of plugs because a lot of times you'll change out a set of plugs. The old ones aren't completely bad, but I save them in case, you know, I want to test something or... Um, you know, swap them in and out. I can clean them to where they're pretty good again, but sometimes a new spark plug is, is better, especially if you're going with the, I think it's pronounced iridemium plugs or iridemium plugs. Um, when you're going with those um, and you're swapping these out, you might have a good set of plugs still. So I hold on to these plugs. Now, in this case, I'm going to destroy one to make um, the adapter. So what we're going to do is First, you're going to get some safety glasses. Then we're going to take this over to the vise, and we're going to hold it on the top of the vise. Then we're going to lightly start tapping it with the hammer. This porcelain is tough. So you're going to want to break the porcelain away, and what you're going to be left with is a rod with like a little flange area and these threads. Then we're going to cut the rod using a pair of bolt cutters I found is the easiest. Um, I used to Dremel them, but bolt cutter works so much better. I bolt cut it off right at the flange. Then I take a pair of... Uh, I put the cap back on at that point. So we screw the cap back on. So now you've got this little piece and then I take it over and I hold it with pliers and I just put it on the grinding wheel for a few seconds to flatten out the bottom of that little platform there. So now I'm going to cut to that. I'll show you how I break it away and I'll show you the rest of the process. Then we are going to clean up the tip of this and we're going to solder the tip of the spark plug to the tip of this tester. So okay, I will be back. We've got the plug we're going to try and extract this tip from. I can't think of any good ways to do this. The porcelain is very very strong on a spark plug. So make sure you're wearing goggles 
and you just want to tap around it and there you go there's your shaft okay so what I'm gonna do now is now that we've got that done we are going to put it in here okay. got a good look and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Dremel with a cutting wheel and we are going to cut it right there so we leave this little flange piece on we may actually just be able to clip it let me see if I can just clip it with the bolt cutters that would be even easier we can just clip it with these all right we're gonna squeeze yeah we're doing it all right so you heard it shoot away I just clipped it with the bolt cutters now I'm just gonna go over to the grinding wheel and I'm going to flatten this off so that it's even with the the little flange there so um, I'll be back when it's time to start putting okay, this Okay, so we've got the end that I took and focused in for I just flattened out the end on the grinding wheel you could use a file whatever you want to get so now we're going to tin both of this and the spark plug tester. Excuse the fan noise. I guess I can do it without the fan for you. That's just an exhaust fan to take fumes and stuff out and make it safer, but I think it might be a little hard to hear while we're doing this. So we're going to put a little bit of flux there, a little bit of flux there. Okay, we're going to get my tip and we'll get some solder and we'll see if we can tin the end of this see if it takes yep took pretty easily so let's see if the end of this takes pretty easily it would appear that it's not well, it is on the edge over there, so let's give it another shot here. Can we get enough? Let's try putting a little more flux on there. Let's see if we can get a little better coating on there. That should be pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this one here. We're going to put a little bit more flux here. Right? We're going to put a little bit more flux on the top of the other one. And now I'm going to take these little needle nose and I'm going to hold this. Let's clean my tip. I'm going to hold this pretty much down against it and see if I can get this thing hot enough to melt. I might have to use a torch. This might be beyond the heating of this little soldering iron. Let's see what I got here. I could use a fatter tip. I mean, it's catching, but barely. So let me just turn the voltage up a little. Got the temperature set to 355 now. We'll try it again and see if that helped with the with the setting here. And we'll see. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to have to use the torch. I mean, it's on, but not on securely by any means. Oh, maybe on securely now. I think it has bound it well. There we go. 
So I had to go up to 350 degrees because of the, the size of the metal to do that. And I'll bring it back down. I usually run around 280, 290. All right. So that's on there, as you can see. So what I'll do now is I'm going to let that cool, and then we'll do a little strength test on it. I'll clean it up on the wire wheel, and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. You saw how I cut the tip off and you saw how I soldered it on and and it's on very very strong I took uh, I took a pair of pliers I mean I pried on it it's on incredibly strong the way I did it and then I just cleaned up the the threaded part on a uh, on the wire brush wheel on the grinding wheel just to there was some debris it's old um, but now it's perfect and then here's the cap that goes on it so I don't know why they just don't make them like this um, like I said, there's some that already have the removable tip, but then the other end is wrong. So, all right. So what you do now is it's real simple. You're going to test it in a regular car. You leave it exactly the way it is. And you plug the spark plug boot on there. You plug your spark plug in there and you look for your light. You want to do an ATV or a motorcycle with a threaded end. You screw this off, right? Now you screw this on to the threaded spark plug that's inside. That would be in the motor on the ATV. So now this boot plugs right on, nice and tight. And then the threaded boot from the ATV, motorcycle, side by side, whatever, plugs right on there. And you've got your spark plug tester. So now I only have to, you know, grab one tester and go out there. And I'm not worried about, you know, adapters. It's actually on the end. And you have an abundance. If you just save these when you do spark plug changes, you should have an abundance of these and just save some of your old spark plugs. Now, I also added a piece of heat shrink tubing only because I don't like this long metal shaft that's there because when you're laying it there and the engine's turning over, sometimes it could hit, it could lay against the metal. or So I just put a piece of heat shrink over it. But that's how I make a universal tester for both threaded spark plugs and regular spark plugs now I would also suggest that you can buy these for five or six bucks I think Harbor Freight sells one for $5.99 um, on eBay I think they're $5.99 or $6.99 prime shipping um, and they go up from there but I would invest a little bit more money when you buy your first kit um, or first one of these I should say and they have another one that's a three-piece set and it comes with the tester I showed you. It comes with this alligator clip. And then it comes with this. Now, this is great if you're going to be doing, um, like, some of the newer Yamahas and some of the, the, I think, the Polarises. And the sockets are really deep into the heads. And you're not going to reach it with that. So this allows you to plug deep inside. You're still going to have to screw on the little center cap if it's a threaded um spark plug but once you screw that on then this goes down into the cylinder onto the spark plug and then you have your end and the boot goes on and so on and so on so you can use this now you can also use this um and plug it in here and then you can clip on but this is a pain that's not going to fit in the cylinder this is is an adapter kit so you can do it in a wide variety um now this will work great on a lot of the newer things. So I would suggest buying the bigger kit. They're like 20 bucks for the three pieces. And then I would modify the, the bulb piece. And then you can use it with all these accessories. And you can use it for all the different things. But that's the best way to make an adapter for your um, threaded head spark plugs. And that'll do it. Thanks.